So one of these nice little cool things that uh, Microsoft Excel has recently introduced uh, back in Excel uh, 2010 was this idea of something called sparklines. Now a sparkline is basically uh, we take a single cell, say for example, that guy right there, and that becomes my chart. Instead of worrying about all this extra bells and whistles and colors and hoo-ha, just put a chart inside the cell and that's it. No, no visualization effects going on there. So let's actually do that. Let's apply one of those. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to just highlight all of my wines uh, just because we're going to do it for each one of these, as you can kind of guess. Now, we have a sheet called the Estimated Production Sheet. And if I click on that, you can see I get Estimated Productions. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to create that spark line. Now again, I've got this highlighted. I go over to my Insert tab, and instead of going into my Charts section, spark lines are actually their own kind of little other thing. And as you can see, they are their own little other thing. If I click on, I'm going to go with Column. Basically what it's going to ask for me is where do you want these to be placed? Notice it's already given me that data. And as we can kind of see, it's doing a little blinking marquee right now. That's actually why we highlighted it is because it would automatically put it in for us. Now that data range, that data range that we were talking about earlier is in estimated productions. Since my cursor is inside of data range right now, since I've clicked on it, I can come into estimated productions and one of the things you'll notice is it automatically kind of points that out as a cell reference. It's like, oh, hey, you're talking about this sheet. And then I want to go ahead and highlight 250, so C6, all the way to L11. Now, I don't want to include total cases because I don't have anything to uh, effectively use on that. And I don't want to use year 1 uh, through 10 because, again, I'm not going to have those as visualizations. And as soon as I hit OK, Notice what I get. I get suddenly all of these different charts when they start to ramp up. Now one of the things I can do is I can actually change the color scheme. Right now they're all blue, which, bleh, you know, if I have color coordination going on here, I should probably have color coordination going on here, right? Well, the first thing I have to do is I actually have to ungroup these things. Because if I don't, then they all change, you know, depending on their color. But now I can adjust them. Now I can say, oh, well, we're looking at my Cabernet. My Cabernet was blue. So I want to go ahead and give this that same blue effect. So let's see. That sparkling color, the marker color. There we go. So sparkling color, boom. And then we go to Riesling. Riesling was an orange. So we go here, orange. Ah. We go to Peanut Grigio. Uh, yeah, I'm not a wine guy, as you can tell. Uh, let's see, that is a yellow. Boom. We go to the Peanut uh, Noir. Uh, yes, I'm going to butcher all of these guys. That's actually the yellow. Uh, the Pinot Grigio was a gray. Uh, the Cabernet Franc, we made green. And the Ruby Cabernet, we made dark red. And so you can see we can actually adjust these and now I have color coordination going on not only in my pie chart but also in my spark lines.